Hey guys, this is Skyjin Hunter. Me and my daughter Yuna have been playing a lot online and we notice a lot of things that random players don't seem to know and I don't fault them because the game really doesn't teach you a lot of these important mechanics. So we wanted to put together both her and my top 10 advice tips for newer players. Again, if you're not doing some of these right, uh, it's not your fault. The game doesn't teach you these things, but hopefully these will make your online hunts even better. What to do if the quest target becomes mountable, AKA wyvern riding. Now, if there's no other monsters around, just ram it into the wall three times. But if there are, for example, the Toby here came in and just <laughs> made the Nargakuga mountable. What you want to do is use the A button attack on the other monster, whether it's very close or if it's already in the area so we can get three shiny drops from it. But instead of doing your finisher with your main quest target monster, what you want to do is hit the Y button to headbang it into the other monster. And that way you or someone else can ride that other monster and now start doing damage to the quest target. Again, use the A button strong attacks at least three times. This will make your quest drop uh, three shinies, which is gonna be very good because obviously it's the quest monster, so people want its materials. And then you can go ahead and end that with the mounted finisher so that everybody has a lot of downtime and can attack that monster. I can't tell you how many times it happens where there is a monster right next to the area or a monster like this that comes in and makes the quest target mountable and people like do the finisher using the quest target. You shouldn't do that. Um, definitely try to make sure that you're maximizing your mounting opportunities. Be careful with Wirefall. This applies to all players, self-included, but one of the top ways you're going to die in this game is by abusing Wirefall. For example, an upset Narga Kuga will do two moves in a row. If you get hit by the first one, just take the fall, lay down, you're invincible, and wait and slowly get up. Uh, doing them two in a row is a good way to die. Next, bring life powders for easier hunts. Life powders are a fantastic item that will heal both you and other hunters around you in that area. For example, I use it here and both of us get some really big heals. It's a fantastic item I don't see a lot of people using. Now it's very easy to craft. You can have Rondine, you can have your cats and dogs trading for god bugs and blue mushrooms, and you can make a bunch of lighter powders this way. Or if you're just swimming in Kamuda points, they are expensive, but you can buy life powders as well. Uh, you might also already have a bunch from the lottery, so just make sure to use them uh, for easier hunts. Flash bombs makes hunts easier. This is absolutely, some people will complain that this makes it a little too easy, but if you use flash bombs uh, pretty generously, it'll stop the monster from really jumping all around the area, will stop them from running away to other areas. It's just a really good way to keep a monster on lockdown, especially in multiplayer hunts, uh, when everybody's whamming on the monster, just throwing flashbangs, especially on something like the Apex uh, Mizutsune, can really make the hunt go much faster. For this one, just go to Rondine and have your cats or dogs trade for flash bugs, and you can make a ton of flash bombs. You can carry five of them, and they are very useful. Sleeping monster etiquette. This is a tough one because there's a lot of things that do more damage than bombs, but listen to the BGM. Did you notice that? If the background music stops, it means a monster is going to sleep. In previous games, the way that it usually goes is when a monster starts sleeping, stop attacking because you don't want to wake it up. Uh, usually the host or whoever put it to sleep may have bombs. Um, if you don't have a bomb, go ahead and just use like the sorry message. It just lets the person know, sorry, I don't have any bombs. And at least they'll know then uh, through communication that they can go ahead and wake it up. Craft the brace decoration. There's a lot of people who get flinched online, especially if you're using something like the lance from other players. And this is incredibly frustrating. Yes, there are some weapons that don't really get flinched because they have a thing called super armor, uh, which allows them to not get knocked out of their combo from hits from other players. But in the most part, you're going to get flinched around if you don't use this level one skill. Um, there are some things here like the wide sweep for the lance will give you super armor for a few seconds so you don't get interrupted. But honestly, don't worry about the advanced techniques of this game. Just make the brace level one decoration. Uh, this will give you flinch free level one, which will stop all your teammates from being able to flinch you. Of course, you will still get flinched from the monster, but this will make your online hunts much better. Do keep in mind, however, if you have flinch free level one on and you get put to sleep or you're paralyzed or something like that, your teammates cannot knock you out of it because you are not taking knockback. So you have to keep that in mind. Maybe just gem in like anti-sleep if you're going up against a sleep monster and you'll be just fine. 
Traps are more than just for capturing monsters. I don't see many people using traps, even though they're very easy to craft, especially if you're buying like trap tools from the vendor during a sale, or you're crafting, you know, buying nets from Rondine, which is very cheap. But traps just used in the middle of a hunt can be a fantastic way to allow uh, more damage, to allow people to break parts and other stuff like that. So don't feel afraid to just use some traps and get some extra DPS. The Lava Cavern Gimmicks. This is something that I don't see a lot of people also using, which is if you mount a monster in the Lava Caverns, if you notice there's this little like red and blue kind of like splurt icon, what that means is that there's an environmental gimmick that you can either place a bomb and blow up to trigger, or you can use the wall bank by pressing Y to launch the monster into it that will do some extra effects. For the red ones, it causes fire blight and it blows up and spews all over them, which is really nice. And of course, my favorite by far is the blue one, uh, this is the water spurt and will cause water blight and also flush the monster. This is a great way to get some extra damage to soften them up and to do some other stuff. So if you notice these scenes are in the area, take advantage of them. Trapping or riding Apex and Elder Dragons. I've been going into Apex hunts and I've noticed a lot of people are placing traps. You cannot trap an Apex monster. It doesn't matter if it's a shock trap or if it is a trap, uh, a pitfall trap. You can't do it. Um, I know that at first you kind of assumed that you couldn't trap them because it was during a rampage, but it turns out that it's a special mechanic. They just can't be capped. Also, if you try to mount them, you'll get this little animation and then immediately they recover. So apex monsters cannot be wyvern mounted. Elder dragons are similar in the way that traps do not work on them. So you cannot use a pitfall trap or a shock trap on an elder dragon. They'll just walk right over it. However, they can be mounted. Uh, so if you want, you can go ahead and mount them. And of course, if you mount them, we can reuse our sort of learnings from the tip below, which was what to happen when you're mounting the target monster. So we're going to go ahead and bring Camellius over to the Anjanaf because it's pretty close. Again, if the monster is really far away, don't just ram them into a wall because your teammates are not going to be able to run here and get here on time. But if it's relatively close, go ahead and do the A button attack against this other monster so we can get some shiny drops and then end it all not in the finisher, but using Y to launch the target monster into him. And now we can ride the other monster, get three drops from Camellios here, and we can get the finisher. And by the time you're done with all this, your teammates should have enough time to get to the area, get prepared, and get ready to do some damage. And of course, I always say this, but sharpen that weapon. Sharpness has a huge effect on damage. At blue, this did 76 at green. Let's see what happens. It goes down to 67. So that is already a very big difference. And of course, down to yellow sharpness is just horrible. I have a video on it. Uh, hit it at the end of the animation, it's only 38. And if you hit it at the perfect timing, it's 63. So yeah, huge damage loss. So make sure you keep your weapon sharpened up for maximum damage. And then finally, just a freebie here is to use messages to communicate. Uh, after a hunt is done, go ahead and use stamps, whether to tell people that you did a good job or message just saying good work. Um, it's nice just to communicate to other players. And I notice a lot of people are not engaging with this feature. So just hit the minus button, throw a message up. It actually feels really good uh, to feel that you are a team, even though you are random hunters. Anyways, those are 10 tips from me and Yuno. Hopefully you guys found them helpful. Uh, go ahead and let me know down in the comments below if there's other tips that you guys would like to share with other new players. Again, this is all in the message of positivity. Um, there's nothing wrong if you don't do these, especially like bombs. Like there's people who just don't always bring bombs or maybe they didn't change their item loadout. So it's not a big deal. Um, but I just wanted to share these in case you were not aware because the game does not communicate it very well. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Share with some other hunters and until next time, happy hunting.